to us in newsrooms and here are more economic news. The Australian dollar rose to an all-time high against the US dollar as producer prices beat forecasts indicating that inflation pressure is still strong. It climbed to $1.0764 in trading on Thursday, the highest since the currency was freely floated in 1983. Australian producer prices climbed 2.7% between January and March from a year ago, according to Bureau of Statistics. Demand for Australian commodities has been pushing up the currency. Analysts say the new highs indicate that interest rates could be set to rise. The Reserve Bank of Australia has kept rates unchanged since November at 4.75 per cent. However, that is a relatively high interest rate compared with other developed countries, some of which have interest rates as low as zero, such as the US. Matthew Sugosta of Moody's Analytics in Sydney said given the wide interest rate differential between Australia and other developed economies like the US and Europe, investors can earn greater yields on Australian assets. Nonetheless, the high value of the dollar is a cause for concern for some Australian industries. Tourism is also taking a hit with visitors finding it too expensive to travel to Australia due to the come up of the Aussie dollar. Well, as Asian economies have been looking to increase trade among themselves, China, Japan and South Korea have stepped up to join hand in a trilateral free trade agreement. The trade ministers of the three countries when they met in Tokyo said that the free flow of trade and investment between the countries was key to sustaining economic growth. With demand from key markets like U.S. and Europe falling topped with financial crisis recovery, Asian countries have been on the cooperative trend to amplify their voice on the world stage. The three countries have already stepped up on a joint study committee involving government officials, business and academic participants to look into the feasibility of a trilateral free trade agreement. China and South Korea are amongst Japan's largest trading partners, and a quick recovery of Japan's economy is vital to their growth. A decline in the demand from Japan and shortage of some manufactured products resulting from last month's earthquake, tsunami and radiation leak have had big effect on their economies. The disruption caused to Japan's supply chain has seen many Japanese firms curb production both at domestic plants and factories abroad because of disruption to supplies of parts. Toyota has already announced that its factories in China will function at 30 percent to 50 percent of capacity until the 3rd of June over parts shortage. While Trade Minister from China and South Korea urged Japan to restore the supply chain as soon as possible, they stressed that the increased trade between the three countries will play a vital role in Japan's recovery process. In the latest volume of the year, U.S. stocks fell on Monday after a lowered outlook from Kimberly Clark increased concerns about higher commodity costs, squeezing profits in coming quarters. About 5.4 billion shares traded on the New York Stock Exchange, the American Stock Exchange and Nasdaq below the daily average of 7.74 billion. Kimberly Clark fell 2.7 percent to 64.24 US dollars after it cut the low end of its full year outlook because the cost of pulp and other goods rose more than twice as much as it had expected. The threat of rising commodity costs will remain in the spotlight for one of the busiest weeks of earnings, with 180 S&P 500 companies set to report this week, including other major consumer names like Procter & Gamble and Colgate Palm Olive. Ken Pokhari, the managing director of ICAP Equities in New York, said that this is going to be the next thing that happens. The forward guidance is going to start to become impacted because of higher prices.